Sweden's new A-26 submarine isn't just military hardware, it's a warning shot aimed straight at Russia. When Sweden calls the A-26 the world's first fifth-generation submarine, skepticism is fair. There's no official definition for submarine generations, and many countries use next-gen as marketing noise. But Sweden doesn't shout. It builds quietly and changes the rules. Developed by Saab, the A-26 isn't nuclear, isn't massive, and doesn't rely on brute force. Instead, it's designed for one of the hardest undersea environments on Earth, the Baltic Sea. The Baltic is shallow, noisy, crowded with civilian traffic, and saturated with Russian sensors, hydrophones, and underwater drones. In this environment, old Russian doctrine, hide by going deep, simply doesn't work. The A-26 is built for a future where stealth isn't a feature, it's survival. It focuses on managing acoustic, magnetic, and electronic signatures in real time, allowing it to operate inside dense surveillance zones without being easily detected. Does it outmatch Russia everywhere? No. Russia still dominates in numbers and nuclear reach, but in the Baltic, where NATO's northern flank now matters more than ever, the A-26 forces Russia to fight on unfamiliar terms. And that's the real threat. Not a bigger submarine, but a smarter one. In the Baltic, there is no deep water. There is only clever. Drones loiter overhead. Maritime patrol aircraft sweep again and again. Satellites watch for wakes, heat traces, anything that gives a submarine away. In this environment, a submarine that can't mute its own existence becomes a liability before it ever leaves port. That's why Sweden stopped copying other navies and started designing for its own neighborhood. The A-26 is a conventional submarine that behaves like a ghost, slipping through sonar curtains, shifting from reconnaissance to sabotage to strike missions without breaking stealth. That's not just survival, that's reshaping the battlefield. And the timing matters. Finland joining NATO effectively seals the Baltic Basin. Kaliningrad is now a fortified island, boxed in by NATO sensors on nearly every side. Any Russian naval movement has to thread a needle under constant surveillance. A platform like the A-26 doesn't just exploit that vulnerability, it amplifies it. This is why Saab calls the A-26 fifth generation. Not because it's louder, faster, or bigger, but because it behaves less like a submarine and more like a submerged intelligence engine wrapped in stealth. Fourth-generation submarines were built around one idea. Stay quiet, find the target, sink the target. Fifth-generation boats like the A-26 are built for something else entirely. They don't just fight in the battlefield, they define it. And Sweden intends to control the tempo. A modern submarine is no longer a lone hunter. It's a node in a massive battle space where information, not firepower, wins wars. That's why the A-26's electronics matter more than its torpedo tubes. This submarine isn't just hunting targets, it's collecting signals intelligence, mapping the seabed, sniffing hostile communications, tracking radar patterns, and feeding all of it straight into NATO's digital nervous system. It behaves less like a traditional submarine and more like a submerged reconnaissance aircraft that also happens to fire torpedoes. And because it's modular, the A-26 can change personalities. One patrol might focus on monitoring seabed cables. Another shadows surface fleets while coordinating with airborne ISR. Another quietly inserts combat divers onto coastlines Russia claims are secure, but clearly aren't. This is where the generational leap really shows. Unmanned underwater vehicles aren't accessories here. They're extensions of the submarine's nervous system. When an A-26 deploys them, it multiplies itself, expanding sensor reach, creating phantom signatures, and degrading enemy decision-making. That's multi-domain warfare made real. At the center of all this is Sweden's real ace, Sterling Air Independent Propulsion, Unlike traditional diesel-electric boats, the A-26 can stay submerged for weeks, not days. The Stirling AIP system, 
pioneered by Sweden and refined through earlier platforms, generates power underwater using liquid oxygen, running quietly with minimal vibration. The result is nuclear-level endurance without nuclear-level cost. AIP makes the submarine harder to detect, cheaper to operate, and perfectly suited for long, silent missions in contested waters. Compared to the massive lifetime costs of nuclear submarines, this approach is brutally efficient. And that's the point. The A-26 isn't trying to win by being bigger. It's winning by being smarter and staying invisible longer than anyone expects. In modern undersea warfare, that's decisive. A nuclear reactor is a massive part of why modern submarines cost so much. Sweden chose a different path. Saab built the A-26 by treating noise the way a sniper treats silhouette, something to shave down, shape, and hide until the enemy starts doubting what he saw. The hull isn't just strong, it's tuned. Every rib, weld, and plate is engineered to kill vibration before it escapes into the water. Instead of exotic metals and bragging rights, Sweden went with disciplined engineering, geometry and materials that cooperate with physics instead of trying to overpower it. That's where the generational leap becomes obvious. Older diesel submarines reflect active sonar like a dinner plate. The A-26 bends it, scatters it, absorbs it. To hostile sensors, it looks less like a submarine and more like seabed clutter. The outer coatings matter too. Just as radar absorbent skin blurs fifth generation fighters, the A-26's hull skin interferes with sonar returns. Sound energy hits the surface and dies instead of bouncing back with a clean outline. In practical terms, that means a Russian frigate could sweep an area and sail right past an A-26 without realizing it shared the same water. But the real trick comes when the submarine goes still. Systems shut down, only life support running. Cold water, no movement. At that point, the A-26's acoustic fingerprint drops so low it blends into the environment itself. Russian titanium boats were built to look invincible. The A-26 is built to look non-existent. When Saab talks about low observability, this is what they mean. Not incremental stealth, but a platform that collapses the enemy's situational awareness entirely. One that forces adversaries to question their sensors, their search patterns, and eventually their assumptions. And that kind of stealth doesn't just change tactics, it changes the entire security calculus of a region, because you can't counter what you can't even confirm is there. They extend the A-26's reach without exposing the submarine itself. A UUV can trace seabed cables, loiter near pipelines, plant sensors on the ocean floor, slip into harbors, or act as a forward scout, giving the A-26 eyes and ears far beyond its own hull. If you started from a blank page and asked, what should a submarine look like in an era of cable sabotage, gray zone warfare, and unmanned systems, you'd end up drawing something very close to this. The A-26 isn't adapting to the future. It was built for it. That's why Poland's decision matters. Warsaw plans to buy three A-26 submarines. And yes, that escalated quickly. South Korea reportedly tried to counter with aggressive incentives, even offering a free submarine. Poland walked away anyway. Why? Because interoperability with NATO mattered more, and Sweden's engineering spoke for itself. Three A-26s in Polish service send a simple message. Russia's Baltic calculations just got harder. And here's the bigger picture. The United States won't field its next-generation nuclear submarine until around 2040. Europe won't see one much sooner. Sweden is already there. Quietly, methodically, without swagger. That's the Saab way. Saab doesn't sell bravado. It sells systems that work. With Sweden inside NATO, the alliance didn't just gain geography. It gained a philosophy of warfare. Smaller platforms, sharper sensors, modular design, unmanned integration, and relentless stealth. Undersea warfare is entering an era where fiber optic cables matter as much as shipping lanes, where drones slip between thermal layers, and where the first warning of conflict may come from a darkened seabed sensor. The navies that win that era won't be the loudest. They'll be the ones you never hear at all. And Sweden's A-26 is already setting the pace.